Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today, as you can see, we will talk again about our retro PC. Not about the PC itself, but about the CPU cooling unit. Because when we assembled the PC, we figured out that the Titan Vanessa CPU cooling block is featuring a massive heat pipe in the center. And the packaging was advertising a 25 millimeter heat pipe, which is something I did not see before or just didn't know about. And I was a bit skeptical if a heat pipe with this dimension even exists. So I did a bit of research and came across some coolers that used this kind of technology in the past, like a noise blocker block, for example, and also the Titan Vanessa. And then I also figured out that there is a Cooler Master cooler, which is called the G100M. That is still a recent product. I ordered the cooler and once it's here, we will cut it open and take a look inside because from my understanding, this is still just a huge heat pipe, like nothing special. It's the same as a vapor chamber as well, but could still be interesting. As you can see, we are now in my production area where we're producing some thermal grizzly stuff and we have some tools here because essentially I want to cut open this Cooler Master. It's called Master Air G100M and take a look inside because cutting open the Vanessa cooler would be a bit of a waste, the Titan Vanessa because essentially this is available in stock anywhere. It's still about 40 or 45 euro, considering that it's like a budget cooler. It's still a bit expensive for an air cooling unit. And yeah, but I think it will be interesting to cut it open and see inside. It kind of reminds me of some old style like Salman coolers, which consisted of a huge pile of aluminum and it was like cut into like fine fins and then opened up a little bit. And this is made out of a lot of individual different pieces. In the end, it's just a top blower cooler. And I will have to figure out how to remove this like plastic ring that's surrounding the cooler. But you can see it's made out of like a lot of individual heat fins. And these fins essentially are cooling this heat column thing, which is sitting in the center. Just removing these tiny clamp things with the screwdriver. And here we have it and yeah, it just reminds me of a huge heat pipe or like a huge vapor chamber. You also have this thing sitting on top, which you can typically find on vapor chambers that is used for filling the vapor chamber and also getting the pressure inside or like under pressure you need inside a vapor chamber. I also noticed that the fins are soldered to the heat column, which means that there is no way to disassemble this without destruction. But I mean, that was kind of obvious. So very similar to a heat pipe, it's just a bit bigger, but it's exactly the same way it works. So you can see on the wall, you have this like sintered material. It's some kind of like copper material, but it's very rough. And you can look at this like you had a huge amount of tiny holes in the wall, like obviously not going through the wall, but like a very rough structure on the wall. And the same thing is also on the bottom and right here, this is the area that would get warm from the processor, for example. Then the liquid could be water or some kind of solvent would evaporate and then condense on the wall right here. And whenever it condenses, due to the fact that you have this like rough structure, this sintered structure, the liquid would go all the way back down to the area that's getting warm. And this way you have this circle of evaporating and condensing on the site to transport the heat. Keeping in mind what we just learned and like found out, it's also quite hilarious if we look at the Cooler Master packaging and it tells us heat column, Cooler Master custom cooling technology for exceptional heat transfer. I mean, exceptional heat transfer, yeah, I mean, it's a heat pipe, right? A heat pipe is always great for the heat transfer, but it also has the downside that you only have one big heat pipe in here, which also means that you are easy to reach the point of saturation. The reason why you would probably go for this approach is the fact that you are lacking one component or you can remove one component. Even the cheapest heat pipe cooler would always require an additional cold plate, like a piece of aluminum or a piece of copper that you have on your CPU and that transfers the heat from the CPU to the heat pipes. And in this case, you don't have that. 
the cold plate is already the bottom of the huge heat pipe. So for a budget cooler it makes probably sense because it's only made out of two pieces. Even for the cheapest heat pipe cooler you have to have three base components. So the cold plate, the heat pipe and the fins. And for this it's only the heat pipe and the fins. So it should make production a bit cheaper which is also still kind of hilarious considering the price of this thing. I guess in production I mean this cannot cost more than five dollars so yeah. Margin wise definitely a very interesting product. But yeah, cooling wise it would only make sense for like a budget CPU with low TDP because otherwise you could easily reach a point of saturation which means that you don't have a sufficient temperature difference between the fins and also the cold plate or like the bottom which contacts the CPU. You always have to have a temperature difference between the point where it's getting warm and where you remove the heat on the heat fence. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You have to have the circulation in between and if it's getting too warm or if you don't cool the fins sufficiently, then saturation is usually reached quite easily and that's probably the reason why you don't find this on like high-end coolers because multiple heat pipes are much better for removing a lot of heat because you don't reach the point of saturation that easily. I guess it was still interesting for a quick video to learn about this. I also didn't know that those huge heat pipes or in the end it's just the same as a vapor chamber, just a bit bigger. But yeah, I didn't know that this term exists, but now I know it. And I hope you also learned something new. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.